Welcome back to another construct video and in this video I want to show you how to create this really really simple class system just using some text boxes. And when I say text boxes, there's my free text boxes. Let's get started. Now the concept we're looking at today is called BB code and it's something that you do need to tick on enable and it allows you to format parts of your text at different points of the text box. So let's look at an example together. I'm just going to click on these three dots to bring the text box in and we're just going to make this text bold. Now the way that we do this, if I give a bit of space, we use square brackets and we use B for the bold tag and then we just need to close it to say that we've finished with the bold tag. So I'm just going to put a slash then B and then close our square bracket. I'm then just going to put new text here and then just press OK and you'll see I've got my bold text and my non bold text. So B is just one example for bold. We can also do color. So I can do color equals red. And then again, I just need to make sure that I close this color tag and press OK. And then we've got our red text next to our black text. And we'll do one more as well. Let's say we want this underlined. Now, if we want this underlined and red, we just put in a new tag, U for underlined. And then on the opposite side, we just remember to close this tag just like so. And there we go. We've got it underlined and then we've got the black text as well. Now, BB code is a language that you might see on certain websites. You can see it on stuff like itch. And there is actually a sort of guide on how to use it all. So this is sort of a quick sort of dictionary on how to use everything with BB code. Now, I don't know how much of this is supported inside of Construct. Just play around yourself. But in the latest version of Construct, we're now able to actually put in images into our text. So I've got some icons here that I've put together. So if I edit these, you'll see that I've got my player icon and I've got coin icon. And what I want to do is actually be able to put these inside the text at a certain points. It's going to manually creating sprites at certain points, which can be a bit tricky to work out. So I'm going to start with my player. I'm just going to click on it. And on this right side, there's this new option called tag. Now I'm going to point out at the moment I'm in beta R352. So if you've not got this option, what you need to do is go to the main menu. So go to the start page, go to what's new. It will open up this new page here and then just make sure you've changed from stable releases to all releases. And then you can go on to the beta, latest beta, and then launch that. So going back to this project then, I've got my player, I'm going to edit my icons, sorry. And then on my icons, I'm going to click on each frame. And I'm going to give it a tag. So in this one, I'll just call it player. The tag doesn't matter, it just as a name you're going to call it by. And this next one is going to be gold. And then once you're happy, just press X. Create a small version of your icon and just put it to the left hand side. And then we just can click on our text. And there's this new option now called icon set. So now we can choose which icons we're using inside our text. So just click. And now if we double click back on our text or use the three dots to bring our text back up, let's change all of this and we'll say, welcome player. And now we want to show our player to the player. So we're gonna use icon equals and then the name of the icon that we set. So in this case, player. Welcome to my shop. Here you can spend gold. And then again, I want to actually put in my icon for gold. Now you might notice for these tags, we're not closing them. We only close it when we're surrounding text with something. We can't surround text with an image. We're just going to place the image. That's why you only need one tag for that. But if we've done everything correct, we now have the player and the gold inside our text. Now, the other thing we can do is we can actually make some of this interactive as well. So, for instance, I can actually click on the gold or I can click on the player and have something happen. So, to do this, we first need to insert a new object and we're going to go grab our mouse. And then we need to change some of our text, like to decide which bit of the text we can actually interact with and click on. Now, this is done using something called a tag. So I'm going to actually do it on the spend gold. So you can click on that spend gold bit and we start with our square brackets again, tag equals, and then we come up with a tag that we're able to then look at in our event sheet to work out, are we hovering over that particular tag? 
So the tag that I'm going to choose in this one is going to be called uh, spend. And then obviously we need to close this tag as well. So I'm going to say that this tag runs until the end of this sentence. So just close that tag again. So now we can check, are you hovering over the word spend gold or the icon gold? And then we can trigger something to happen if you are. So that's that tag set up. We can now go to our event sheets and we're going to add an event. I'm going to start with our text box. So we're going to scroll down and there's this new option called has tag at position. Now, first of all, we do the tag. So mine was called spend with capital S. And then we do the X and Y coordinates of what we want to check for. In this case, we're just going to use mouse.x, mouse.y. So is the mouse currently over one of these tags? So in my first example, what I actually did with this is if you are, we're going to take the mouse, I'm going to set the cursor style from normal to hand. And if not, we're going to use an else block and change it back to normal. Now, this is actually from one of the construct examples. So there are some examples of this already that you can check out on the main page. So we just change that back to normal. And let's test that one first. So you'll see that I put my mouse over and all of this bit now has the hand changed. And when I move off it, it changes back to normal. So let's also make it so we can trigger something off this. So we're gonna do the exact same thing again. So I'm actually gonna copy and paste this code. But we also want to add another condition and just check, have we clicked? And we'll use the left click. So have we left clicked and are we over this tag? And then we can trigger something else to happen. Now what we're actually going to do is go to our text and we can actually set text. And you can actually write BV code inside the set text function. So in terms of this one, I'm going to do speech marks. Here are the items that I sell. Now for this, I want this to be bold. So what I'm going to do is put in my bold tag, like so. And I don't want the rest of it to be bold. Let's close that properly. I don't want the rest of it to be bold, so I'm going to have a new line that says, okay, then here's some of the items I've got and actually show the items. So we'll hit done on that one. Now, here's a nice tip for you. If you don't want to write a big, long text box, just add another action, go to text, and this time we're just going to append text. So this will append it on the end of it so you can actually spread out your text into multiple lines of code instead of a big block of code. Now, if you just write this as it is, it's not going to be on a new line. You actually need to use the new line command. And then if we use and, and then go back into our speech marks, I can put dagger is 10. And then instead of actually putting gold, I'm actually going to put the gold icon. So again, I just put icon equals and gold. And then just close the speech mark. So again, really, really handy to be able to write this inside our set text and append text. So let's test this all out now. We'll full screen it. And when I hover over, here are the items that I sell. Dagger is 10 gold. So here's the first example that I showed you. So what I've got is I've got the night icon. I've changed the text to red. And when I click on it, it then shows the class information. Changed it here. Uh, I can also write my name in this example as well. And oh, spell my own name correct. And then we've got the option to start adventure, which actually puts a sort of loading bar in. I think OBS is messing around with my sort of cursor icon at the moment. But again, this works for all the different classes. Now, if we press the H key, I can actually hide everything that's not a text box. And you'll see that actually there's just three text boxes in here. So let's have a look at the code for that. So we'll start with the class code. And you'll see that I'm underlining I'm making it bold and I'm setting the size to 20 and then writing the word class and then I close my underline, close my bold, close my size. I've then got the icon for night. I've got the color red. I close the color around the word night and then for the plus, I've got a tag which I've just called K for night. I'm making that bold and then I'm putting the plus in the middle, closing the bold, closing the tag and I repeat that three times. So all of that left side is just done with that. In terms of this right side, you see that I've got nothing on there. I have got an icon pack already set though, which includes my different icons for the sword, the shield, the gold, the heart, all of that is in here. And all of these have got the tags on them. 
but I'm actually setting that with the event sheet. So what I've done is on left click, if it's got the tag K, and I'm just checking if you're not already on the night page already so it doesn't refresh it all. So what's actually happening here? Well, I'm setting the text. So you'll see that I've got the word class again, just like I did before. I've just copy and pasted this from my first example. And then for each icon, I'm just appending. Now I'm doing two new lines. So new line and new line and then my BB code. And this just means that I get more of a gap in between, but I'm using the icon attack and then the word attack is bold. And then I put 10 that's not bold. And that's it. This is something that takes a bit of practice to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes very, very handy and very useful and much easier to do than other methods. Uh, and then finally that start adventure, this is just the code for that. So again, we've got the tag called start adventure, the size is 16, it's bold, etc., etc. Um, I've also accidentally left in some outline code that I never actually used, I got rid of it. Um, so outline again, another useful one that you can use. The rest of the code's pretty straightforward. If you're hovering over, wait. If you're not, set the cursor to normal. So I'll leave this code in the description as always if you want to play around, but let me know, is this something that you're gonna play around with? If you are gonna play around with it, please look at the latest version in the beta because it has the eye concept, which is just so powerful and you can do so much with. But that is it for today. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video.